Hosanna to the Son of David. Oh, blessed is he, oh, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Rejoice, daughter of Zion, in the one who brings great joy. Sing praise, children of Judah, for the Lord is close at hand. Hosanna to the Son of David. Oh, blessed is he, oh, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Rejoice all who are searching for the truth of holy life. Sing praise, children of Judah, for the Lord is close at hand. Hosanna to the Son of David. Oh, blessed is he, oh, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Rejoice all who are hungry for the taste of living bread. Sing praise, children of Judah, for the Lord is close at hand. Hosanna to the Son of David. Oh, blessed is he, oh, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We gather today to celebrate the Sunday of the Passion, the beginning of Holy Week. So let us begin to pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Six days before Passover, when the Lord came into the city of Jerusalem, the children ran to meet him. In their hands they carried palm branches, and with a loud voice cried out, Hosanna in the highest! Blessed are you who have come in your abundant mercy. O gates, lift high your heads. Grow higher, ancient doors. Let him enter, the King of glory, who is this King of glory? He, the Lord of hosts, He is the King of glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you who have come in your abundant mercy. And let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross. Graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering, and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. This is a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I may I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, 
and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? All who see me scoff at me. They mock me with parted lips. They wag their heads. He relied on the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him. If he loves him. Many doors surround me. A pack of evildoers closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? They divide my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, be not far from me, O oh, my help, hasten to aid me. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? I will proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Revere him. All your descendants of Israel. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God, something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found himself in appearance he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every name should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confessed, Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to Thanks God. Be to God. Willing to give me 
if I hand him over to you. They paid him 30 pieces of silver, and from that time on, he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, the teacher says, by appointed time for us here, in your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him, Surely it is not I, Lord, he said in reply. He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi, he answered. You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and giving it to his disciples, said, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, from now on I shall not drink this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it all with you new in the kingdom of my Father. Then, after singing a hymn, he went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, This night all of you will have your faith in me shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him in reply, Though all may have their faith in you shaken, mine will never be. Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. All the disciples spoke likewise. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, began to feel sorrow and distress, and he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little, fell prostrate in prayer, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet, not as I will, but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, so you could not keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again. My father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Then he returned once more, found them asleep, but they could not keep their eyes open. He left them again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing again. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand, when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, by a large crowd with swords and clubs who had come from the 
chief priests and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged a sign with them, saying, The man of is the one. Arrest him. Immediately he went over to Jesus and said, Help, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus answered him, Friend, do what you have come for. Then, stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand into the sword, drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its sheath, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my Father, and he will not provide me at this moment with more than twelve legions of angels? But then, how would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say that it must come to pass in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out as against a robber, with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I sat teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass, that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left them and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter was following him at a distance as far as the high priest's courtyard. And going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priest and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Though many false witnesses came forward, finally two came forward who stated, This man said, I can I come to destroy the temple of God, and within three days rebuild it. The high priest rose and addressed him. Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us on that boat before the living now, whether you are the Christ the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. What for the need have we of witnesses? You have now had the blasphemy what is your opinion? They said it reply. He deserves to die. Then they spat in his face and struck him, while some slapped him, saying, Prophecy for us. Christ, who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maids came over to him and said, You too will be Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again he denied it with an oath. I do not know, the man. A little later, the bystanders came over and said to Peter, Surely you too are one of them. Even your spirit gives you away. At that he began to curse and to swear. I do not know the man. And immediately a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have seen in the betrayer innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? Look to it yourself. Flinging the money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. 
chief priests gathered up the money but said, It is not lawful to, dispose, to deposit this in the temple in the temple treasure, for it is the price of blood. why that field even today is called the field of blood. Then what was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet. And they took thirty pieces of silver, the value of a man with a price on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites. And they paid it out for the potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor who questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said. You say so. And when he was accused by, accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him with one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now, on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Morales. So when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one of you, which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message, Have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to, to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them, Why? Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. Why? What would, what evil has he done? And only shouted aloud. Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to him yourself. And the whole people said in reply, His blood be upon us. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered a whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military, military cloak about him. Weaving a crown out of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. When they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. When they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had him crucified, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself if you are the Son of God and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him and said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. So he is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now and we will believe in him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if he wants him. 
for he said, I am the Son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lima sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, This one is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran to get a sponge, he soaked it in wine, put it in on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to save him. Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. Tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men with him, who were keeping watch over Jesus, feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening, and they said, Truly, this, is, this was the Son of God. Ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Jesus wrapped it in a clean linen. Joseph wrapped it in linen and laid it in his new tomb that he had hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a hewn stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there facing the tomb. The next day, the one following the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, So, we remember that this impostor, while still alive, said, after three days, I will be raised up. Give order then that the grave be secured until third day. Let his disciples come and steal him and say to the people, He has been raised from the dead. This last imposture will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, The guy is yours. Go, secure it as best you can. So they went out, secured the tomb by fixing a seal to the stone, to the stone and setting the guard. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
we would think about all of the things that we would hear about in, in this gospel today. We would, we, would, we would be with Jesus when he was in his first few days, when we were preparing for, he was preparing to, for, for his coming into Jerusalem, for his arrest. We would, we would be with Judas when he betrayed Jesus and sold him for for pieces of silver, we would be with him together at the Last Supper when he instituted the Eucharist, and with him together on Friday when, he, when we commemorate his truly giving of himself to the Lord. But this will be different for us this year because of this uh, COVID-19 disease that's in our midst, because of the instructions that we've all received to keep a social distance from one another. No congregations are coming into our church. We are not gathering together during these holy days. But we can, and we should, gather in spirit during these holy days. That each day, if we can, we may perhaps watch the, the daily mass on television. And that even more so, it's important to raise our mind and our heart and our spirit to God during we try in an interior way to walk with Jesus as he experiences his death on Good Friday and the resurrection next Sunday when we celebrate Easter. And all of these readings today help us understand why Jesus died on the cross. We often say that Jesus died on the cross for us. But how exactly is it for us that he dies on the cross? Because Jesus has come into our world to show us how to be obedient to God. God has entered into a covenant with us, asking us, in all the Old Testament stories, asking us to be people of faith, asking us to listen to what God has to say to us, asking us to be obedient to His commandments. The Old Testament people, good as they were, were never quite able to do this perfectly. Even the great ones, like Moses and King David, even they were not able to be obedient to God in a really perfect way. And so there was always this hope that God would raise up someone who would show us how to do this, someone who would fulfill and, and make perfect this covenant that God had initiated with us way back in the We saw that, we believe that person that God has raised up is Jesus, his only son who took upon himself our human nature at that first Christmas, who entered into our world, who was always being obedient to the will of the Father, always listening to what the Father had to say to, to us. And Jesus was the one who was always being faithful to the command that they had received from his Father to announce his good news in our world. And because he was announcing that good news in our world, people began, some people began to hate him, some people began to plot against him, some people decided they were going to put him to death. And even when Jesus saw that happening, and saw the, what the plans were for him, he continued. So his death on the cross is kind of a gift to his Father, a gift of perfect obedience, a gift in which he can truly accepts that he will do whatever it is so to show us how to be a faithful disciple and always do what the Lord is asking us to do. And so having, having lived his life in a perfect way, God our Father accepted it in this wonderful miracle of the resurrection. And so we look forward to the situation we are in today, that today God is with us, that God loves us, that God constantly shares his love and his power with us. And this year, like every year, we are called in our everyday life to take up our cross, whatever that cross might be. Perhaps 
are suffering from some disease. Perhaps someone we love is suffering from some disease. Perhaps we're finding it hard to, to, to earn a living. The place where we work is a difficult place to be. Perhaps we are unemployed. And for certainly for almost so many of us today, we are dealing with this, these new restrictions that have been placed upon us to confront this virus. People in the healthcare profession are being called to give uh, mightily of themselves so that, so that other people can be healed. Many of others of us are simply being asked to stay at home and to forego all kinds of social interactions that are so important to us. Whatever it is that is our cross today, Jesus, by dying on the cross, shows us that with with, with, with the power of God on our side, we can do what, do what the Lord asks us to do. And when we do what the Lord asks us to do, on the other side of this cross, there is resurrection. On the other side of this cross, there is life that will never end. That's what we believe. Especially during this time of crisis for all of us in our creation, being needed all the world. We believe that on the other side of this, this virus, on the other side of this illness, on the other side of these, these uh, situations that we need to confront, we will find, we will find new life with Jesus. He, he is greater than everything else. The power of God is greater than the power of sin and death. If we are faithful to God, if we are obedient to God, God will walk with us and lead us out of this dark place into light. But let us ask the Lord today as we begin our celebration of Holy Week, Holy Week to be with us and to help us truly believe that with His help we will come into a new life, into a new place, into the place of resurrection and joy. Let's ask the Lord for that great gift as we unite ourselves with him during this holy week that's about to unfold for us. God bless you. Now let us join together to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father of Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. And I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, through God from through God. Begotten on day, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I have been able even the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the cross. I believe in one, holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And as the solemnity of Easter approaches, dear friends, 
Let our prayer to the Lord be all the more insistent that all of us and the whole multitude of the baptized, together with the entire world, may come to share more abundantly in this sacred mystery. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual fruit. Let us be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from all my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise of the Lord of His name, for our good and good of all His holy church. 
and through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by the sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you as a joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things that make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessed, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John the Apostle, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity to your premium church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, Joseph our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of your family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the whole world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who we are pleasing to you, and their passing from this life, give kind and touch to your kingdom. Here we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. And at the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. The Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, who take, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. And Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world, free us by this your most holy body and blood from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us always faithful to your commandments and never let us be parted.
and let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you hope. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down to the blessing. And look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless us, Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Of your cross, the Savior said, If you would, my disciple, be, deny yourself, the world forsake, and humbly follow after me. Take up your cross, be not ashamed, let not disgrace your spirit fill, for God himself endured to die upon a cross on Calvary's hill. Take up your cross and follow Christ nor think till death to lay it down, for only they who bear the cross may hope to 